you may know it as the buffalo. Its real name is the bison. It's the largest land animal in North America. There used to be many millions of this humpback mammal roaming the prairies and foothills. In the winter, the bison have to settle for sedges and dry grass, which they dig out from under the snow with sideways movements of their big heads. I remember how you told me not so long ago that the buffalo hide represented, symbolized, if you will, the extinction of indigenous ways of life. Native identity in Canada alongside the extinction of said buffalo. You said that in putting the fragments of buffalo hide together, you were attempting to salvage culture, to hold on to something that was rapidly changing. Oh, never mind. That was someone else. Adrian Stimson, have you had the privilege to meet one another? Adrian told me a most provocative story about his residential school experiences. His father, Adrian Sr., attended the Old Sun Residential School, forged a deep friendship with the schoolmaster, Mr. Bill Starr traveled alongside and worked for Starr at other residential schools. Starr, who became Adrian Jr.'s godfather. Starr, who was later convicted on several accounts of sexual abuse of boys across these schools. Adrian Junior, who attended day school, is left uncounted in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission today. As if colonization were as clear as day and night. The intergenerational traumas are at times sutured through bloodlines. What? You say, you already know the story. Sometimes it is very difficult to understand what you are saying. At other times, it is not so difficult. One would assume that the affiliation of our sympathies arises from paralleling the experiences 
of our respective suffering. Am I then to be siding with you, Buffalo Boy? An alliance building exercise that proudly eschews white colonization. Because those of Japanese descent in Canada were interned in kind during the Second World War. Labeled enemy of the state, the yellow peril, properties confiscated, exiled into the interior and away from clear waters. To those around who might be listening in, please pardon my Japanese. Born and bred in Canada, my pronunciation is a conflagration. The thick mucosal sound of anaphylactic shock brought about through beasting most painful. My mother tongue sits squarely in my mother's mouth, who incidentally is in this very room, wondering why her daughter is behaving in such an imprudent manner. Please let me translate. This is what was said. It is not your business. Just kidding. This is what was really said. It is none of your fucking business. Just kidding. Perhaps some things are meant to be left untranslated. There is more than meets the eye. You see, this delicate kimono has been painstakingly hand-stitched, many hours involved, under low lighting, my great auntie, meanwhile, fretting over her daughter's brutal state of domestic affairs. When I slide my arm through this decorative sleeve, feel the cool silk brushing against my thigh as I walk gingerly across the floor, I remember that great auntie has made hundreds more for geishas, politicians' wives, and revered movie stars. I remember stories as a child of Japanese national pride in the colonization of Asia. I remember that grandfather had gone mad from participating in atrocities in Manchuria under the imperial sun. And I remember grandmother never understanding why she and grandfather had lived in China for 11 years in the first place. What does this mean to you, then, Buffalo Boy? At best, my witnessing you is a most ambivalent endeavor. For what is there to prevent me from mapping my own trauma, especially with the best of intentions, if I fail to pause and inquire? But who has sown your exquisite finery, Buffalo Boy? And won't you rest a while? Are we then fated strictly to walk alongside conversations that only meet up at points of colonial contact? But Buffalo Boy, I have a confession. You see, you have given birth to Geisha Girl, or to put it in proper translation. In Judeo-Christian terms, post-apocalyptic miracle, or more likely spawn of Lucifer. 
for 007, a maternally inherited aversion to fish broth with the most abominable request for sake, shaken, but not at all stirred. In feminist epistemologies, Donna Haraway's post-race cyborg, designed in consultation with Michael Nicol Yagulanas and Kurampu. In Electro House, David Goethe's mashup of DJ Bear Witness and the Yoshida Brothers. And for Gen Y Asian immigrants, we are Hapa cosplay, etc., etc., etc. In this generation process, the intergenerational is a most peculiar grid, chimerical configurations. that contraindicate all too familiar lineages of trauma, relationally overdetermined, underdetermined, no matter. For in no uncertain terms, it is safe to assume that actualization is greater than the sum of all ideation. But who has the last word? Ho! Sleepers arise, the sun's in the skies, the summer mist flies from the lake and the lee. The red gods do call, ho hi, hikers all, come drink of the life cup you never will see. Then blow ye winds high, or blow ye winds low, or blow, ye wet east wind, over the sea. We'll face ye and fight, and laugh when you smite, for storm was the trainer that toughened the tree. Yo-ho, arise, 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 yo-ho. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to the shaman exterminator and the land. To obey Buffalo Boy Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and very gay. The question remains, are you there to sit back and study through disinterested eyes, or will you partake?